um, methods, etc., you know, that are uh, introduced in the uh, in the code behind. But it's essentially the same with physics. <coughs> now, Microsoft uh, uh, came up with the newest technology for the uh, for the user interface, and that is uh, Windows Presentation Foundation. And I'm going to provide you with a quick overview on the architecture of the uh, WPF. Okay. Oh yeah, syntax error. Kakalusot na ako eh, marami na ako sa ano eh. Okay, and then I'm going to give you a, you know, a quick uh, overview about the major uh, key concepts and features of the uh, WPF. Okay. There. So this is basically the architecture of the uh, WPF. So as you can see, there are three major uh, components of WPF. So we have the uh, presentation framework. Uh, present presentation core and then the MIL core and because WPF provides us with a very powerful uh, set of technologies in order for us to, pro uh, to come up with the uh, 2D or 3D type of graphical user interface okay and as you could see from there uh, there is a component called MIL core that is not actually a managed code but it's a uh, it's a layer created by Microsoft so that WPF can easily interface with the DirectX. And that provides us with the ability to come up with a three-dimensional uh, graphical user interface. And on top of the common language runtime, or the CLR, there's a component called Presentation Core. And that component does not include any UI-specific uh, uh, functionality. But this is basically the base uh, is a collection of base classes that are used by the presentation framework, and the uh, presentation framework is basically a set of classes and components that actually provides us with the uh, user interface uh, uh, controls or components, same like a uh, text box or uh, window forms or pages. Okay. Now, uh, in WPF, um, you 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 develop your UI. Okay, using a uh, XML type of file, so we call that SAML file. So as you could see, um, you use an XML-based uh, markup language in order for you to build your user interface. So we call that declarative, uh, you know, development of UI. So as long as you understand how to write XML, you are you could easily write your UI with a uh, with a uh, you know uh, XML syntax, All right? And what is the advantage of uh, you know coming up with a uh, uh, a user interface that that is uh, declared uh, uh, in in a fashion like that as compared to declaring your uh, your, your UI controls no in the code behind? Okay, so here you could easily uh, ship or give this file to the designer. Okay, let them work with a uh, with the look and feel etc. As long as they don't change the uh, you know. Uh, a number of, of attributes there, you're fine, okay? And then they return to you the, the file, and you could easily use that or hook that with your application. And even with designing your UI, it's easier in WPF as compared to Windows 4, okay? So you could, if you, if you, sino dito yung nakagawa na ng mga web applications? So, uh, in, in when we develop web application, in order for us to control the look and feel of the web app, uh, we usually create style sheet, correct? So here you can also create a you know a file like that, or even you can create a resource on the WPF so that you could control the uh, the look and feel of your UI. All right. In terms of data binding. Uh, WPF provides you with a very powerful uh, data binding mechanism. So, from the uh, you know from the uh, data source, you could bind uh, a control in WPF called collection view, wherein once you have a collection view bound to the data source, you could actually shape the data that you are presenting to the end user. Like for example, if you want to uh, to provide a uh, summarized form of data in the tabular format, you could do that. Um, uh, you could you could you could uh, do or you could write a UI that has a two-way binding with the data source. Meaning, if the UI you know um, if there are some changes to the UI, that can automatically be cascaded to the 
uh, data source. And if there are some changes on the data source, automatically the UI is modified. You don't, you don't need to add extra coding in order for you to achieve that. All you need to do is to say uh, the binding mode is going to be two-way, and then you're going to say that um, whenever there are changes on the uh, data source, I want you to cascade that automatically to the uh, to the user interface. Okay, and it's very powerful. No? And um, we strongly suggest that um, if you have not done any development yet for .NET, so try to consider working uh, in a project with WPF because this is the long-term strategy strategy of Microsoft. Okay, use this technology for your uh, user interface. All right. Um, in in Windows form, in order for us to handle or to interact with the user, let's say the user clicks on the button or select an item from the list box. Okay. Um, typically, we handle that using the event arcs, right? And uh, in, in WPF, the way you handle the, the events is a little bit different. Uh, we have what we call routed events, where in, um, it's very powerful, the routed events uh, is, is very powerful because uh, you, the, the, the handling of, of event can be coming from the top of the chain in the controls you know, that are actually working uh, in order to provide you with a UI, or it can come from below. Pwedeng, pwedeng pataas yung, uh, yung pag-route ng event or pa baba. Okay, it's very powerful. However, um, if you're using the routed events, you are actually you know, writing a code that is a hook, no? that has a uh, dependency on the model. And if you would like to avoid dependency between your model and also your UI, you're going to be using the, the commanding or commands in WPF. And that would allow you to come up with a UI that does not know that there is a model and a model that does not know that there is a UI. And you could achieve that using the view model. Okay? And we understand that a number of uh, you guys have uh, you know, given a feedback to us that we provide you with a uh, you know, good, uh, good uh, you know, presentation uh, in relation to writing a WPF application or Windows application that separates the concern between the model and the uh, and the UI, and I'm we are going to provide you with that a little later. All right. So first, before I show you some syntax, let me talk about uh, model view separation. Right. So as we know, the model is basically a set of classes no? that rest that. Uh, <coughs> That uh, represent uh, your uh, represents your business and uh, business uh, rules, right? So you create a number of classes that represent the real world objects, and in each of those classes, you create a number of behaviors that represent the functionality of those real, real world objects, and they also represent uh, contain a number of properties, correct? And you write your model without. Uh, you know, thinking about uh, what is going to be the client code that is going to use this. What you are concerned of when you are writing your uh, model is basically to actually provide you know real world solutions or real world uh, or to solutions to real world uh, to problems in your organization. Okay, and the view is basically a layer in your application, like the Windows form, the WPF or ASP.NET you know, that allows the user to interact with your model, okay? And why are we going to separate the model and the view? And why is it important, okay? So, we have the uh, con uh, concept of separation of concerns, or SOC. And separation of concerns was not, uh, it's not a new term, no? It's been there for, for many years. However, for Windows developers like us, no? Hindi masyadong, ano, hindi natin masyadong kinoconsider yung pag-separate natin ng uh, code natin between the UI and then the business rules. Typically, yung mga business rules natin sinusulat na natin doon sa likod ng code natin, right? Ng UI. So, double click on the button and then you write your uh, whatever validation you have on the code behind. Okay. And um, many people have, uh, uh, have been done that. No? Uh, in fact, uh, I was in a, uh, 
I was uh, delivering a work, attending workshop to uh, you know to to BB.NET developers and C# -sharp developers, where in I, I taught them how to actually separate the concerns between the UI and the model. And if you look at the some of their previous code, you can see that yung ano, yung mga validation, business rules, dun sa user interface, the sa code behind. And pagdating ng maintenance, medyo mahirap yung pag maintain ng code kasi hinalo na nila. And then if they're going to decide on changing the technology for the user interface, mahirap din, uh, yung, mahirap din yung pag move to that new platform kasi nakahalo yung business rules sa UI. Alright? So separation of concern, it's not a new term. Uh, however, it ensures that your code has a single and well-defined meaning. So if you have a UI, dapat ang responsibility niya is basically to interact with the user. If you have a model, the responsibility of those classes are actually to you know, come up with the behaviors and properties that uh, actually solve uh, real-world problems in your organization. Okay, so before I move uh, further, uh, let me show you what uh, dependencies are. So if you look at the sample code here, I have a class called shape renderer and it is dependent on one class which is shape right so either you refactor that uh, so that you could have a uh, an interface that can be instantiated inside the, the shape renderer class still the shape renderer class is dependent on the uh, shape uh, on a, an external class and that is uh, uh, you know that is a classic example of uh, dependencies and we can also think about uh, your your solutions uh, project that is that references a, a number of class libraries and your project is dependent on a number of class libraries that are referenced okay so what are what is the key objective of separating the concern so we cannot come up with 100 percent you know separation of concern unless that you are using a more advanced technique like for example uh, in injection of control etc you know but uh, the key objective is basically to limit the dependencies between your projects or probably your classes. Okay, so that you could uh, actually protect your client code, your UI. You know, you know, whenever there are changes on the classes that represent your uh, business objects. Okay, two dependent code is hard to maintain, and worse if the dependency is cyclical. So it's mas mahirap siyang i-maintain. So, to solve the cyclical dependencies, okay, um, you could actually come up with this uh, application following this pattern. So, you separate your view, okay, and then you separate your model. And as I said earlier, that your model is basically a set of classes that represent real-world objects. Those classes contain behaviors that actually solve real-world uh, real problems in your organizations. And in order for the view and the model to interact, okay, there is no direct interaction. Okay? If, the mod, if the view wants a data from the model, that is going to be taken care of by the view model. If there are changes on the view because of uh, you know, user inputs, and it, the, the, the view wants to save that, you know, to persist the change to the, to the model, that is going to be taken care of also by the model. Okay. You could test your, your model separately. You could even test your view model without actually uh, instantiating the classes in your view. Alright? So that's, that's how you could actually uh, partition your application. And you could achieve this in WPF quite easily. And there is already in, uh, an infra infrastructure. Okay? that you could use in order for you or to facilitate uh, the development of your application following this uh, uh, in architectural pattern. In fact, when Microsoft, uh, have you heard about the Microsoft Expression Blend? Okay. So the Microsoft Expression Blend is a tool that allows you to create UI for WPF and also for Silverlight. When Microsoft created that, uh, you know, when they they created that and updated that particular software. They are using the model view view model architectural pattern, right? Tracy with web expression. Um, not sure with web expression. Bakakasi ibang team ng gumagawa.